The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Mikey boy. Tommy, how you doing, buddy? Good. What's going on? Mikey, I got to tell you something, honestly. Yeah. 81 degrees today. Unbelievable. Good for you. Not a cloud in the sky. How did people react last weekend when it really got pretty cool down there? <laughs> freaking, <laughs> freaking humorous. Well, actually, last week, Ellen and I, we were up at the villages visiting uh, our in-laws, my brother-in-law and sister-in-law, and it got down, the high on Saturday was 47 degrees. A high. The high. Now, remember, we're we're in the tropic zone down here in North Palm Beach, but the high up there was 47 degrees. Mike, you should have seen the way people were dressed. You thought that they were living in Anchorage, Alaska. It was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I heard from quite a few of the guys, and everybody was moaning and groaning about how cold it was. But Benty, it, Benty wrote to me, he says he's never been so cold in his life. This is a guy who grew up in New England. He's been down in Florida for what, 10 years, maybe, if that? It was it was very, very humorous. And then, you know, uh, actually down here in North Palm, it was that day was in the high 50s. This is about a 10 degree difference. But now we we finally uh, I think we've turned the corner because yesterday was 78 and we've got clear sailing for at least the next 10 days uh, in the mid 70s, high 70s, low 80s. So, well, you can't beat that with a stick. Hey, no. Tommy, I just want to give a shout out. Uh, to our, our friend, Sharon Morley. Uh, I don't know if I told you this, but I had commissioned Sharon to do a painting for us. Sweetheart of a woman. Sweetheart. Oh, of a woman. let me, talented. My Very. ache in the head. Uh, I had a picture done of, uh, of a house that was in a movie, and uh, we had an opportunity to visit it. And uh, I, I, took, I had a picture on my phone, and I sent it to her, and she worked on that for a couple of weeks. You should see the job she did. Oh, she's great. That, she's very, I mean, very mind boggling. And very I just talented. want to say to us, to see a kind of listeners, if you want to have a portrait or uh, something of a loved one that you'd like done, even, even an animal, uh, think about Sharon. She's very reasonable. Uh, SharonMorley.com can give you all the information you need. Good for you. Hey, Mikey, a uh, couple of things. Um, by the way, everybody, welcome. You're listening to the uh, Sicilian Corner on Facebook, YouTube, uh, TuneIn Radio, 980. Bill, billboards on 495. Billboards, yeah, on 495. Post office, everything. We're, we're all over the place. Hey, Mike, I want to ask you, though. Uh, oh, by the way, my big brother, uh, yeah. Al Zapp, uh, big bro, is going to be joining us the last two segments from Sicily. A lot Looking going on in Sicily, it. man. A lot going on in Sicily. Um, Al's got some concerns uh, about the, what the government is doing there. So we'll, we'll chat with Al about that. Uh, the lovely Esther is not going to be on, quite frankly, Mikey, between you and I. Yeah, I'd um, rather have Esther. Yeah, she's much nicer <laughs> than him. Much nicer <laughs> than he is. I mean, with all due respect, Al, you're not that good looking if you're watching this right now. But well, let's, let's move on. Um, anyway, Mike, what did you think about the... I wanted to get in your honest take. I know you don't like the guy, but put no, your no. Deal, Put your give feelings credit. Aside. I give him credit where credit is due. So what, do you, what, do you, what is your assessment about how the retirement was handled of Tom Brady? Well, I think somebody really screwed up. Uh, I, I mean, I think the information leaked out before he really wanted it to. I, I'm somewhat surprised that he didn't make mention of the Patriots, our Belichick, our Kraft, in his final words. And I'm sure he's going to make up for it. I think he went on Twitter the next day or something yeah, and tried to correct it. That was just, uh, you know, something. He was excited. But the guy, as far as being an athlete, you have to tip your hat to him. Well, you know, something for Bill Belichick to call him the greatest football player of all time. That's, that's a compliment. It really is. But, you know, something I still think, I think there's something more down the road coming with, Brady as uh, as it relates to the Patriots. I just think there's something going on behind the scenes where I think there will be a big event. 
Uh, I think they, uh, this is just my opinion. I think they, he was one day contract. Yeah, maybe something like that, or just downplaying it so that he could have said thank you in one in one respect to just the Tampa fans, and then something special for the Patriots fans a little later on. We'll see. Hopefully, what I mean, look at the players they're losing next year. I think this had a lot to do with influence Brady too. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you got fifteen contracts coming up. Uh, they're losing. They're losing their. They're nuclear. I mean, yeah, he does, he doesn't want to reinvent their core the wheel. Is being depleted. He, he doesn't want to reinvent the wheel. Hey, shout out to a lot of people. Uh, Roger, of course, Nancy DeMarco, uh, the beautiful Barbara Cody, Peter. Uh, there was somebody else. Maria. Nancy Greco. Uh, Maria Berta. Hello. Berta is that you? Beautiful from, from Italy. So anyway, welcome to, uh, welcome to all of you. Um, oh, and by the way, Tommy, to add to that. Yeah, we we heard from Carol S. Uh, Carol S. lives in uh, Boxford, and she was listening to the show last week. And we were talking about the butcher boy, and we were talking about the pork loin being butterflied and stuffed, and they cut them into the pork uh, pinwheels. Yeah, and she went and she bought some, and she says, "Oh my God!" She says, "I'm so glad." She says, I probably walked by them a hundred times, never paid attention because she does shop in that store. And, you know, the butcher boy, you know, 60 feet of fresh meat case. It may not be a big box store, but I got to tell you, everything that you possibly want, they have. And plus, they got the service behind it. Well, but it was I- nice to hear from what Carol had to say. And I'll tell you, Tom, if you ever decide to make a dish like that for you and Alan, get a box of rice pilaf. Cook the rice pilaf while the uh, pinwheels are cooking in the oven. It only takes about a half an hour. Put them on top? Put the No. Put the rice in the bottom of an oval dish. Then get the pinwheels because keep in mind, they're stuffed with spinach. So you got green. You got mozzarella. You got the white. All right. You're, you're, you're making me top. hungry. Continue. So now you layer them on the, rice, uh, on the rice pilaf, and then you get fresh parsley for the perimeter of the dish, and you present it. You're in like Flint. Well, I got to ask you a question, Mikey. You know, uh, during the snowstorm up there, which when was the snowstorm? Last week. Okay. At the height of the snowstorm, you um, texted me a (laughs) a three inch steak. It wasn't three inch, it was was probably an inch and a half. So I got to ask you the question. Obviously, it's a Butcher Boy steak. My question is did you get that steak on the cup? Did I what? Did you get it on the cup, on the bubble? Uh, as a matter of fact, Tommy, the answer is negative. I, I, you're not going to you're not going to convince me that you didn't do a little trade with Butcher Boy, you know? Uh, honest engine. Why? Why would I lie to you? And Tommy Boy gets nothing out of this. And, and first of and and first of all, I bought a whole rib. I it happened to be a prime rib that was sent in on a beef load. And it really wasn't Butcher Boy, to be honest with you. Uh, and I got a call saying they had this prime rib. So I bought the whole thing. And I had a cut into inch and a half Wait steaks. Wait a second. Hold on. Hold on. So now you're telling me that you got a call. They happened to get a call that there was a prime rib available. So Yeah, I, I, that happens quite a bit. So are these hot, <clears throat> hot prime ribs that you're buying? You're buying freaking hot. I'm not, <laughs> no, no. Seriously, are you? No, are you, but every once in a while, <laughs> like say the the butcher boy market at North Andover. All right, you're digging. They a handle hole USDA. Here. They handle USDA choice. But every once in a while, you'll open up a box of boneless rib ribeyes, and lo and behold, you're going to see something stamped prime. Those you put away for yourself and you bring home for your family. Or you call up a good friend of yours and you say, <laughs> okay. I happen to have a prime rib. Would you be interested in it? But I think the call really goes, I happen to have a prime rib. Meet me around the back of the store so I can move it into your car. Don't Why give me you, that crap because I know how you are. You know, <laughs> you sound like my father. I mean, really. My, my father asked me in dead, dead seriousness. He says, you know, are you a loan shark? 
My father says this to me. Are you a loan shark? Justifiable he says, question. one of the people that work with me said that they heard that you were a loan shark. Well, well, you know how much that hurt? What, what, you well, know how much you, that hurt? By the way, Johnny Savistano is, is agreeing with me that the meat fell off of a freaking truck. But let's let's move on. I have seen you, Mike, in action. Loan money to people. And I've heard the words come out of your mouth. Take your time to pay me back. 25% big. I, I don't check. I have heard that come out of your mouth. You know something, points. Tom? If you're in a position, points. if you're in position to help one of your friends, you know something? Everybody needs help at one time or another. Right? Absolutely. Okay. So what, what makes you think I'm charging 25% interest? That's not right. Father Mikey would give me a whack in the head if I did that. That's a good point. Hey, and by the way, speaking about Father Mikey, uh, we posted a picture. Father Mikey was nice enough to uh, send me a picture, which was actually quite funny. Um, and, you know, uh, we're going to be doing a series of what we're going to call TSC, that's the say in corner, shorts on YouTube. And they're going to be little minute, minute and a half vignettes of uh, different things. Al and Esther, uh, they'll be, uh, uh, you know, we'll, they'll be linking, we'll be linking to them where if there's something going on in Sicily, like an eruption of Mount Etna, you're going to be able to, you know, we'll, we'll share it. You're going to be able to see it firsthand. Uh, I'll be doing some things. I may do some Bless Me Sister stuff. Oh, um, nice, so, nice. I like that idea. And Father Mikey, um, is as soon as he gets back from uh, his his little uh, venture out with uh, Sister Good and Plenty, and they're living in sin. Believe me, they're living in sin. But I, I you don't know that to be fact, so you shouldn't be saying that on the airways. Well, Father Mikey uh, periodically will be giving our Sicilian corner viewers and listeners Father Mikey's words of wisdom. And he simply, he posted yesterday, Tom. He posted yesterday yeah. and said that things were really starting to shape up with the yak farm. <clears throat> Everything was starting to come together. And he also is bringing four Sherpas to this country. Again, Mikey, that's that's I call that I, I'm calling shenanigans because my nice. source. I'll tell you why. My sources, my sources, Sherpas. No, my sources. Have, oh, sources have gotten back to me and this past tuesday they saw him walking out of the mustang ranch in las vegas now i'm just telling you what my sources are telling me it friend. could have been somebody that looked like him oh really with a collar on and, and i mean the guy's wearing a collar at the mustang ranch are you freaking kidding me was it an 18 inch collar because he's got a big neck <laughs> i don't know but but I, I don't know if this is black. You can't get collars like that. You know, you have to specially order them. Well, I, I tell you, I mean, I don't know if this is blasphemous. And Chrissy, if it is, just let me know. But those collars are actually good. If like, they have like a hickey or something. Well, actually, I think what he had on was actually a shirt. And the collar is embedded in it. That That's a complete cook? shirt. Yeah. I saw that. He looked good. He looked good. Well, anyway. Uh, he's just call- running around. So you think he was in Vegas, do you? I do. He was at the Mustang Ranch. I don't know what he was paying, but this is so we're going to be calling him TSC Shots. This is the same corner. Uh, next week, they'll start coming out. Uh, just check our YouTube channel uh, because there's going to be some cool, you know, some cool stuff, some humorous stuff, but some good news uh, uh, material coming out of that. With that being said, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, Big not the lo- not the lovely Esther. But the home the other guy, the other half, going to be joining us from Sicily. Hang in there. We'll be right back. All right. Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today, 
today. Today. Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple, fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603-952-4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience Artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Bellum Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries, serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzla, owners of Grazia Italian Restaurant in Dragut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdi. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazia Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. Okay, we are back. And Big Al Bro from Sicily. Albert, how are you, brother? Hey, beautiful day here. How's it over there in Florida? Very nice. Hey, I got a question for both of you guys. Wait a minute. Hi, Mike. How are you? Good, cousin. How are you? You look great, Al. How's, how's the weather over there in New Hampshire? We're getting some ice and some sleet. And uh, it's not a very nice day, to be honest with you. Uh, stay in but DPK. you know something? It's a Friday. Who cares? You have your prime rib. You're all set. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. Oh, hot, I got hot dogs, onions, and potatoes in the really? oven. Yeah. I okay, love that, that dish. Me, my, that, sounds, that sounds like not very appetizing. Tommy, if you had a dish of it, you'd go freaking crazy. How about looking it's, at the camera? It's excellent. It's excellent. It's inexpensive to make. And you know something? The hot dogs are almost out of date. So. <laughs> hey, listen, you know, yes. there are two products that have become indispensable to me. Two products. That's it? Yep. WD-40 and Witch Hazel. Those are the two greatest products ever invented. Witch Hazel? Absolutely. What are, they, are they still make that? What are you kidding? What do you use it for, may I ask? Witch Hazel to the body 
is like WD-40 is to, you know, you, you can use witch hazel on your body to do numerous things, which we won't get into, but many, many, many different uses for witch hazel. I what highly do you recommend use it for? Uh, clean my skin, uh, clean my glasses. <laughs> Take the rest off your forehead. We, no. actually, we actually know somebody that works for witch hazel. We do. Very, if you have a hemorrhoid, do you have a hemorrhoid? Wonderful and hemorrhoid. You know, son, be serious for a moment. What do you use it for? Uh, skin cleaning, skin cleanser. Yeah, it's an antiseptic. Cleaning your skin. It's a, it's a really good product. Cuts, minor cuts, scrapes. Wonderful product, witch hazel. Love it. But we don't have that in, to answer your question. Now, you have Sicily. nothing in Sicily. You have freaking nothing in Sicily. Tom, Zero. Uh, we have nothing in Sicily. Let me tell you something, okay, brother? Bad. Why don't you watch our latest video that, F, that Esther did on all the fruits and vegetables and the overflowing stuff in the markets and then go show me some pictures right. of a market basket and then we'll have another discussion how, how does that sound brother all right that makes good sense. we are the land of plenty uh we're like by Egypt the way, wise, okay all right all right are you land both, of plenty wow can, can you guys both do me a favor since you're both right. supposed to be professionals uh will you look in the camera and not at the screen both of you, because you're really irritating me. For your information, that's what I'm doing. Well, now you are. No, now I've been doing it. No, you're full of crap. You know something? Raise your seat a little bit. And you'll see my eyes are higher. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Abby. A lot yeah. going on. The first thing I want to talk about is uh, what's going on with the COVID situation in Sicily. Good, bad, getting better. What's happening? Uh, to answer your question in one second, we plateaued out, which is a good, a good news. Yeah. New infections and stuff are going down. People getting vaccinated are going up. Deaths are just people dying, you know? I mean, yeah, but that's like because they're trailing, numbers, right? The, the deaths yeah, are behind. We fully anticipate a very active uh, touristic season coming. There's no, oh, that's good. It's safer here than it is in the United States. I mean, frankly, I don't want to keep on comparing, but it's safer here. They're much more draconian in the way they enforce stuff here in Europe, and especially if Italy's the most draconian of them well, all. Can you give us a give us a couple of examples? Yeah, of I was that. just going to yeah. ask that. Okay, I'll give you I'll give you like two. Like if you don't have double vax, you're not going to be able to work. It's making long on the short of it. If you're over fifty, if you're over fifty, you can't go to the bank and pick up your pension check. How does that sound? How does unless that, you have a shot? How, unless you have a double vax, yeah. How does that sound? Wow. Huh? So what do you have you to do? You, have go, to you can't go to a restaurant unless you have a green pass, which is two shots and a booster. Wow. How does that sound? All right. Wow. They have their thumb right there squeezing Mike. I mean, right? that sounds out like, quite frankly, though. But that I hurts mean, the economy. Yeah, I mean, it sounds kind of like a fascist kind of a of, of a of, well, of, it's a good word to use. Yeah. Actually, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have to understand that. The mentality of the Italians is not like the mentality of the Americans, especially Mike, you living in New Hampshire, you know, live free and die and all this other stuff. It's I know. not here. I mean, I know. Not, you know, we've had we've had fascism here. There was before World War II, there was fascism. All right. And then what happened? The fascists went to bed and then they woke up as Christian Democrats. Same people, right? Different, Different names. clothes. <laughs> All right. you. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Key idea here, same people. Now their kids are running the shots here. Everything yeah. is about nepotism in this country. Really, there's a lot of nepotism going. There's always been nepotism in Italy. I mean, but our form of democracy is not the same as the American form of democracy. And people very much, not all of them, but a good proportion of them, especially the older ones, are kind of like sheep. I mean, to make a long and the short of it, there is a very vibrant uh, anti-vax movement, you know, but it's only about 15% of the population. Is it that high? Yeah. It's wow. About but, and in Germany, it's, it's uh, you have to understand, Germany, Holland, Belgium, France, there are violent violent uh, demonstrations on the anti-vax movies. These people don't fool around. They, it's an art form. When they, it's not like you have in the United States, you know, make a sign up and go home. They don't do that crap over here. 
here they throw bombs back at the police. <laughs> Al, right? so yeah, what is your no, feeling? Serious, you don't fool around. No, I believe that. But what is your yeah. personal feeling about? Is it too draconian? I mean, you're 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 from the United States, but you've been in Sicily uh, quite a long time. What do you, what's your feeling about it personally? <laughs> All right, listen. I have, as an officer of the court, all right, I've always abided by the law, but you know, there's, as Martin Luther King says, there's good law, there's bad law, and then there's law that should be no goddamn good at all, all right? right. Yeah. So I, I, I don't, you know, I just, I right down the middle, brother. You know, I know when to duck, I know when to bob, I know when to weave. Yeah. I'm a kid from the city of Lawrence, and anybody from the city of Lawrence was relocated over here that have a, has a half a brain could dominate. I mean, I don't want to sound arrogant about it, but if you have a half a brain in the city of Lawrence and you come here, you can dominate, period. Whether really? You're, period. period. Mike, Mike, have you thought about right now, If I was 20 years late, younger, 25 years later, I'd be a multi-millionaire here. And Mikey, so would why, you. Why don't you think about we, we would be like Jimmy Buffett and his brother over here, okay? Like, I think you should think I'm about serious. It. I'm not kidding you. Ah. You know, I, I wish that I could replay the last two and a half decades of my life here in Italy, as opposed to the United States of America, because people here are so dependent upon the state for handouts that they have no, no creativity at all. Okay. Why should they have creativity when it's handed to them by the government? The people who have money on the other side of the story, most of them, it's generational. It's passed down from grandfather to bop, ba boop, ba boop, ba boop, and here's your status in life. But the old, uh, uh, who was that guy, Algie Hiss, or uh, whoever the guy was that was broke, and then he got to be Algie Hiss. Yeah, I think that's who he was. The guy that was broke and ended up being a millionaire. There were big books about that in the United States. Those stories are few and far between. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you have to have dough. Money begets money in here for sure. So what, what businesses would you see uh, that people should think about if they wanted to, if they want to move to start off to get invested in? Real estate. Just real estate. Okay. Well, no, real estate's a good business, but not to sell to other Italians because, number one, there's no money in Italy for other Italians to buy places, but... People are making a ton of dough, rain me, believe me, buying places over here for the cheap and selling them to Americans. Or yeah, well, let me ask you that. Or I want British to... or Australians for beach, for houses, okay? Or hotels. Do you know that right now today, as I speak to you, because of COVID, about 85% of all the hotels in Rome are closed? Well, are uh, closed. Close it, close it, as they say. As Massimo would say, Close it. Al, right. let me ask you, uh, you know. Right, so you could pick up a, you could, wait a minute, you could pick up a hotel on the cheap if you wanted a hotel. And guess who's coming in? The Chinese. Yeah. They're like, they're like eating at the trial right now because they have the do re mi. Tommy boy. Um, you know, we see a lot of ads here in the United States for, you know, uh, articles about, you know, going into this remote town in Sicily or Italy and buying a building for three dollars as long as you yeah. rehab it. Is that is that legit? Is a lot of that happening or is that more of a scam? Tom, listen, you know, you should know this because we both grew up on an alley in Lawrence, okay? If it's too good to be true. So why is it too good it to is. be true? Explain to me why. You think that there's any good place you think that any of the desirable places that you would want to live in Sicily, you're going to find a house for a buck? No, my question. For one question. second, you're going to find a dump in the middle of East Bum, you know where, Sicily, on the mountains, that's practically inaccessible by any places, okay? You're not going to want to live. There. Like, I'll give you a good example. We went, Josephine Leonard and Chris, we went to Tusa. Tusa is a nice town. Okay, Mike, it's a it's a town that's a two tiered town. Nice. The beach is nice, but way up top is a small medieval town. It's got seventy percent vacant. Now, why is that place seventy percent vacant? Because anybody who's young, there's no jobs there, there's no internet. So what do they do? They move to Palermo. So who's left? 
the old time is playing scuba, playing briscola on the on the on the street. Well, I think I think Tommy, you're making a good point because we get uh, we see in the paper we get emails yeah. in certain towns are trying to entice people. Yeah, especially yeah, the I'm retirees. Now, the retiree, they're not going there to try and make a, a pay. They're going there to right. enjoy the beauty right. and the people and the culture. Right. But so for a dollar, you can get yourself yeah. one hell of a house. Mike, here's the you thing. know, so that's what if I think you're, you're referring to. I, you know, all day long, I advise people, you know, I have a law practice here. Okay. You would be a banana head, not you, but retirees would no, be. Oh, you said it right. Head. No, if, if they bought, if they bought, okay, <laughs> to retire here, you'd be a banana head. Whereas you could rent four years with a four year option. And then you, and then it's automatically renewed. No muss, no fuss. You keep your money in a in a, a mutual fund, a index fund, throwing you out nice steady uh, retirement income, as opposed to buying a place here and having the Italian inheritance laws screw your heirs for taxes and every other thing. Okay, because it's different here. Than it is, you know, I would not advise a single retiree to buy in Italy. I'd say take a lease out. You can find great. How much do you have to spend? What's your budget? Two thousand, where you can get this type of a house a month. Three thousand, you can get that type of a house a month. Four thousand, well, now you can name wherever you want to live. Okay, interesting. You want to be on the beach, you want to be in Talmina, you want to be here or there. You get those dumps that they're trying to dump you. They're desperate. OK, now there are other people that could use those places. As a matter of fact, the Italian population is getting very old because people aren't having kids. They haven't been having kids for a long time. Maybe one of a very low number. It's not like before. OK, so there are other groups that they could be bringing in, especially from the UK. Now that the UK is not part of uh, uh, Sicily, those people are dying to come here. They want to get out of the oppressiveness even in the UK. So there's a lot of different, Albania, there's Greece, there's, there's a million places, okay? A million European places that you could repopulate Sicily. But if you, what's going to end up happening is that's not a good idea in my view. They have to bring industry in here too. Jobs, they need to have jobs, which that's beginning to happen. Some of these universities, the University, University of Catania with these, uh, incubator uh, uh, sections now, computer integ integ uh, integrate, uh, uh, incubator business type things, they're beginning to take form. Pfizer is in now Catania. Pfizer, you know, the pharmaceutical company. Uh, they just came this far away from having a Disneyland in, uh, set of, in, uh, in uh, Sicily. That far, but they're going to score uh, some big place. Coca Cola is going to open up over here in the greater Palermo area. That's what they need. They need to have a middle class. Okay, all all societies function with a middle class, Mike. Okay, what is the Sicilian government doing to entice businesses like you just stated to come to Sicily? Are they giving them a tax break or? Well, I mean, Ireland went the through economic, the same. Yeah, and it, it, you can get yourself for yourself, for example, Mike. Okay, you can get yourself a golden uh, visa or a golden citizenship. I mean, literally, if you have X amount of money, and you promise to open up a business in Sicily, and you and you provide, uh, say, five jobs or ten jobs, you're in like Flynn. Okay, you come in, you don't have to worry about anything like that. Okay, they have all these different types of of uh, visa programs permanent visa programs too, I might add, right? Uh, where you, a guy like you, man of substance, and comes in here and, and, and you know, they, they hit the requirements right off the bat. Who they don't want, they don't want people, especially the elderly, who are gonna be a burden on the state, who are trying to come here without ever having paid into the pension or the retirement systems because there's quote unquote free uh, uh, medical, okay? They don't want those people here. And there's a good proportion of the Italian parliament who's beginning to push back on that. They're like, why should, why should we let these people in 
They've never paid what? What have they paid for the uh, for the for for, the, for for health? And now all of a sudden we're going to be giving it out to them. You, you understand? And it's we would be saying the same thing yeah. in the United States. We'd be saying the same thing in the United States if it was the other. Way. We ask a lot of people are saying that right now. All right, listen, we're going to we're going to take a break. Uh, it is uh, Big Al is uh, on the air with us from Sicily. Just got a nice text from Doctor Jimmy DeRestorel. Um, Hi, feels James. That feels feels that uh, you know since our time is running out and there are opportunities in Sicily, he would like to uh, get the band together again, the four of us, um, and maybe you could set up a tour of Sicily for us. But he's asking if the Chinese will listen to songs like Wooly Bully or Get Off of My Cloud. So I don't know if you're interested in maybe lining us up to do a tour. But really are, you, are you kidding me? Is that we're going to really take, take a quick break. My brother is an absolute moron Sam, if he thinks Sam that's what we're telling you. Right. Mike. <laughs> we'll be right back. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know, Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe, sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that'll make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites in the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is the host of all these great places, and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala, located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, the Havel Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Havel Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy chairman reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at w www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Deborah Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Deborah K. Law Offices today in Massachusetts. Massachusetts, 978-686-4645. In New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzla, owners of Grazi Italian Restaurant in Dragut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazi Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. Big Brother Al's in the house. Al, I, I do have a question. Uh, you mentioned we were talking about some of the things that you thought uh, we should discuss, and you posted a dollar fifty wine in plastic bottles. What the hell is that all about? The wine harvest has been plentiful the last couple of years. I mean, really plentiful. And uh, the best way to buy wine, which if you bought it in the states would be a lot more, is to go to the local green grocer here. They have the big barrels. Yeah. And you buy a two liter bottle of wine that they pour. No way. Plastic. Oh, yeah. They now have that's rose. a good idea. That is a good idea. They have, 
Nero de Avila, they have white, they have like all the different types. And uh, so you spend four bucks for two liters of wine. How can you and go wrong? If you clean out the bottle after you finish with the wine and bring it back, they take off 10 cents. On no the next way. Purchase. Swear to God. Yeah. It's, it's plentiful. Right now, the wine here is terrific. And Alan, are you, a, you know, you weren't a big wine drinker when we were growing up. Are, are you are you into wine now yourself? No. Or are you still you still yeah? See, I'm not either. I'm not a big wine drinker. I drink grappa. I like grappa and brandy and cognac in the wintertime. Grappa has improved tremendously. Has grappa has improved tremendously. Shot, the Chardonnay grappa is just unbelievable. For those yeah. of you, the one that's is clear color. Yeah. Instead of rough on your throat, the Chardonnay made from the Chardonnay grape is great. Well, I have a question for you, Al. The uh, coastline of Sicily is 600 uh, miles. How big is the immigrant problem? People coming into uh, Italy question. illegally. Very good question, like a good question. They don't stay here. They get they get, they they pick them up. They fish them out of the water. They put them on an island. They process them and then they ship them out. Where do they ship them to, El? Yeah, I was going to ask. They ship them to, to different countries. Remember, there's 27 states in the EU. So those, they have to, the, the EU law says you have to register in the way you land. So if you land in Italy, I get you. you. You're going to that detention center. If you land in Greece, you're going to that detention center over there. And then once your paperwork gets processed, then they have an even way to disperse them. Nobody wants to stay in Italy, Tom. Because yeah. they have the worst social benefits of them all. Everybody wants to go to Germany with its plentiful jobs. They want to go to those uh, uh, um, uh, countries like Holland with its plentiful jobs and multiple benefits there. So they don't want to stay here. Those that do stay here end up being productive members of the society, in my view. Now, yeah. I, you know, in my uh, view. And, and I believe, no, I, I believe that. All right, so here's a question, Al. Give me or give us, give our viewers, listeners, Mike and I, three pluses on living in Sicily and three minuses living in Sicily. Three as of an American, as an American, as an American. Oh no, you can just, live like you can no, live like no, no. a king you're, you're, on two thousand bucks a month. Okay, go ahead. You, as one. You like, okay, you can live like a king on two thousand dollars a month, okay. which is just about the average for Social Security. So all the horse nonsense about having to have a million bucks to retire is bull feathers, okay? You if you're a, living in Sicily. Three months, three months worth of money in the bank for yourself, and that check comes in, you've got everything paid for for the month. Okay. Two, of course, if that's you get one. an happy one, that's one. Number two, you're eating almost like a liquid penicillin in terms of the healthful nature of the food. Good point. It's free from pre preservatives pres and all the other crap that you've been that I was poisoned with in the United States of America, starting for the way, Mike, with the beef and the poultry and the chicken, because all you all that beef over there typically is done with the you know the modified grains that the cows eat and the pigs eat and all this other stuff to fatten them up. Uh, the same thing with uh, with with the uh, veggies. The veggies have all sorts of sorts of pesticides on them. Uh, and, you know, for the bugs and all this other stuff, Monsanto, there's no Monsanto stuff here. And it's a, that's a huge thing be, on trade barriers between the United States, the EU and America. EU doesn't want that stuff in here. Mm -hmm. You can't get American hamburger any place in the EU. Why? Because it's all, it's all GMO modified or whatever that stuff is. So that's- I wonder, I wonder Tommy, how good, uh, if Tommy Amin was to open up another butcher boy, and bring it to Sicily, how good it would do. Really? I mean, the people would go freaking crazy. I what, think. are you talking about using American, American beef? Yeah. If, 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 if he was able to get it in? Yeah. yeah Is that a problem be, bringing it would in? Be, you can't bring it in. It's illegal. To, you can't bring in American okay, beef. Okay, I didn't know that. That's good. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. Yeah, yeah the EU, you know? if, if Tommy, you mean, if, if it was legal to import beef and Butcher Boy showed up here, the line would be from here to Nairobi, Kenya. It'd be hundreds <laughs> of miles long, but but <laughs> you can't. They can't do it. So you he if if like like say for example McDonald's right? There's a there's a bunch of McDonald's here. They don't bring in the beef from the United States. That beef comes from Germany or it comes from the north of Italy. It do, it's not American beef. You can't bring American. Interesting. Beef in. All right, what's number three? Yeah. All pork. All pork. Okay. Okay. Close. 
With somebody three, of clothes. Huh? Oh, okay. the cost of clothes. Okay, uh, good value. Even though there's a twelve percent difference in the exchange rate between the euro and the dollar, where the euro is more money, the cost of clothes, things that you wear, things for your house, etc., is cheaper than the United States. And in the case right now, since COVID, more plentiful because of you know Germany. Germany supplies a lot of stuff. The, the German electronic stuff, the uh, one brand called B Blunt or something like, like that, yeah. will make things from air conditioners to refrigerators. If they were going mano a mano against, say, GE or Whirlpool, they'd blow them out of business. Really? Yep. Wow. Flat out, the Germans have, the, they have quality that you can't believe. Really good stuff, yeah. All right, so, those so are, now those are three major ones. All right, so now what are the three negatives about living in Sicily? Oppressiveness. That's far and away number one. Okay. Government oversight. Like for example, here's one that's gonna shock you, Mike. It's now illegal to take out from the bank your debit card at one time more than a thousand dollars. You can't take out from your debit card from your bank hooked up over here in, in yeah, yeah. more than a grand at once. So what if you need two grand? You have to go back the next day and take out another thousand. What's the reason for that? For money laundering because of la droga, because of drugs. They're trying to curtail mafia activity. Okay. Wow. And banks have to notify if they, if they see a patent. So let's say there's a thousand today. Tomorrow it is nine fifty. The next day it is nine seventy five. If there's that patent that's around the thousand, they that goes right it. to the. They report that, yeah. So it, yeah, it's just like the ten thousand dollar draw here. You draw ten thousand dollars out of right. the bank, they have to report it. Right. So, you yeah. know something. That's why you take nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine. Hey, look right, at uh, for those of you who have PayPal and. Uh, Patheon or whatever, Paleon, whatever that thing is called. Now, for the transaction over, every transaction over $600 in the States gets the IRS gets notified. Yeah, well, you know, something with PayPal because of the our businesses. I mean, PayPal now, it's all, you know, you get 1099. If you, you yeah. know, there's all of that, right. all of that. I mean, right. we've gotten, so, uh, for our taxes, for our company, we've gotten 1099. So you asked, eBay me, and, you asked uh, me. PayPal. Yeah, the know, last which, negative. Which a big negative is that. That's a huge negative. Yeah, and absolutely. obviously the cost of energy, the cost of energy from natural gas to, you know, gasoline for your car is at least two and a half to three times more expensive. Yeah. But to compensate that, people drive smaller cars. What's a, what's a gallon of gas, Al, uh, there approximately? It's, it's, a, it's a liter. About eight bucks to nine bucks. About, yeah, they sell it by the liter. Uh, yeah, but it's about, the equivalent is about eight to nine bucks a gallon. But to compensate wow. for that, I mean, somebody, and the biggest cars from Ford that sells over here are like the, the old Ford Focuses. Yeah. Old ones, okay? Fiat Puntos, Cinquecentos. Small cars. Small yeah. cars. Those are good, right? Citroën, those are good. But they have the big cars too, but nobody drives them. In my yeah. opinion, I think the biggest problem, and I think you hit upon it earlier uh, when you were talking about the young generation does not want to stay in Sicily. That age group, say from... 20 to 30, they they want to better themselves. So they have to leave Sicily to go someplace to make a decent wage. Uh, do you agree with that? Or well, Mike, look, you know, back in the time where our grandfather came to the United States, there, that's a lot of like romanticized baloney, to be honest with you. Half really? of the people, over 50% of the people who came at the turn of the century when our grandfathers did and so forth, over 50% ended up returning to Sicily, 50%, okay? They went to the United States, they sent money to their, their relatives, no. or, and then 50% of them ended up relocating back to Italy. And that's happening the same today. So when the young kids leave, it's not that, I mean, I'm sure some people leave uh, permanently, but over half of them come back. That's interesting, and the, yeah. And, and those that don't come, listen, once Sicily gets in your blood, I don't care where you go in the whole world, okay? Yeah. There's nothing like the call. It's like the call of the siren. When you're in a certain country, 
you're thinking about Sicily. It is just, why do you think I'm here? I mean, if I was like, you know, fascinated with, you know, Seabrook or Hampton or Boston or New York or Miami or Naples, Florida or wherever, don't you think I'd be there? Hey, Al, we got a few minutes left. Let's, what about you, yeah. me, and Sicily? What's going on with you, me, and Sicily? Well, we've been doing terrific, thank God. The Lord's been good to us. We have almost a million and a half views now. A million and a half people, Mike. Okay? We have... Uh, good for you. Almost, yeah, we have almost 8,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're getting about between thirty and 50,000 views every month Fabulous. on our YouTube. Uh it's because of Esther, obviously, because she knows how to paint the picture. She can present it. I mean, I'm, I'm like sure. the guy that's in the way. I'm the major impediment of the advancement <laughs> of the whole operation. <laughs> Let me tell you that. But very you well said. Picture. Thank you very much. Uh, she's uh, She's got an eye for it. And, you know, between the two of us, we make it work. You know what I mean? That's, that's what you. I can say. Yeah, we make it work. That's you know, we were talking uh, at the beginning, before you came on, we are talking about, the, you know, uh, we're going to be starting uh, what we're going to be calling them TSC shorts. Um, uh, we need, oh, okay. Uh, Al, a, a producer is asking you to stay on after the show for a few minutes. I don't know why, but anyway, uh, we're going to be doing some TSC shots, uh, the Sicilian Corner shots on YouTube. And we're going to be utilizing some of the uh, uh, information that Al and Esther uh, disseminates out to the rest of the world. Maybe it may be a little a news blurb on Etna or something that's going on in Sicily or even something that's going on with Yumi in Sicily. Well, you know, we're, we're on a lot of uh, things just like you, Tom. We have a, a large presence now on this Roco. Is that what it's called? Roco? Yeah. Uh, we have different platforms that we've been on, but in the case of Roco, these things are now really growing. So when you have multiple platforms like you, your yep. numbers don't go up arithmetically they go up geometrically so you have to it's very important to work all your platforms that's, that's how you, that's how you, that's how you have to do it well we're, we're enjoying it yeah you guys uh, you guys have done a great job you and esther uh what's going on if people want to contact you uh, they have a tour group four five eight ten people how do they do yep. it go to our website www.youmeandsicily.com and you can contact Esther and myself. We have great merchandise. The merchandise has been flying, Mike. I'm telling you right now. No the kidding. We had t-shirts. Uh, we had, uh, what do you call it? Embroidered stuff. Stuff flew out. The hats are embroidered. Uh, right now we have some uh, sterling silver trinacrias, solid sterling silver trinacrias that we get, our friends get some stuff for us and they say, look at, we only have 20 of them. I mean, to get stuff like that, in the United States at a jeweler or wherever, you know, it's cost a fortune nowadays, but you know, with these guys, they're trying to, un you know, Talmina is not doing very well, for example, right now, a lot of because, the shops because get, of the pandemic, right? You know, they're just yeah. getting out of the pandemic. So, you know, we try to help some of these guys out a little bit, you know, to try to move their merchandise, so to speak, uh, uh, for them. Now, another question uh, before, you know, you're going to hang in till, till we go away, but uh, the Sicilian project, if people want to, Real quickly, tell us what the Sicilian Project is. How can people donate? www.thesicilianproject.com. That's a nonprofit, 501c3, tax exempt nonprofit. We basically take money in from American donors, Canadian donors, Australian donors, and we help people in Sicily. I mean, just since since before Christmas, we've given out over eight, seven or 8,000 euro to needy, needy people, churches, et cetera. Once the pandemic passes, we'll resume doing our, our mission of teaching English to young kids. But right now, because the schools, uh, you, can't do, you can't do the schools, we transitioned into giving money, right, bypassing everything, right to the people that um, you know, really need it. And we're very proud of all the people that we've helped. It's been terrific. Now you guys have done, you guys have really done a, a yeoman's uh amount of work uh, over the time you've been there. Uh, you guys have done a great well, wait. job. Tom, we have a great board of directors on the Sassine Project, you know, from Giovanni Lanza, our president, mm -hmm. Joe Montechua uh, Colonial, who's been with us for many years, Gaetano Chipola, the list of, of luminaries that are on our board of directors. And, you know, Esther was very instrumental, one last thing I want to say, of hooking up the University of South Florida uh, 
through an, another person that we know, this Dr. Rosemary, with a medical school in Anna. And now these two schools are collaborating. Wow. Imagine that. That's because of cool. Esther's efforts, we have a medical school in Anna benefiting from the University of South Florida. And they had their first lecture two weeks ago, 100 attendees in, in Anna. So th as cool. that program grows, if you kind of trace it back, at the bottom is the work that we've been doing here. That we, you know, I mean, Yumi and Sisley was the mechanisms that people heard about it, and we facilitated the, the connection, so to speak. So, yeah, I, I, but that's Esther. That's the that's because that's what well, she is too. She's a, a philanthropist. Excellent. Yeah, she's once a very very good woman. All right, guys, uh, time to wrap up. Mikey, what's up for okay, the weekend, Mike. real quick? Yeah, take care, Al. You look fantastic. Al, I really you, don't Al, have you any. You look pretty good, Al. You know something it, for an this, old buck, Al. You look this, good. No, nah, this is the best I've seen you look in years. No, wait a second, Mike. Let's years. talk her down that road. It's You're right not now. Tommy's older brother, are you? Come on. I can't you know, believe that. Mike, I started walking a, a, you know, seriously a year and a half ago, and I walk in the summertime or springtime ten thousand steps a day. In the wintertime, when it's cold, seven thousand steps a day. And it's really helped me. And I've been dabbling around with this intermittent fasting where I'm, I'm not, you know, I don't eat three meals. I'll have a small breakfast and maybe a substantial lunch. Ten that's seconds. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Listen, oh. we love you guys, Al. Thanks for say, uh, you know, stopping by. Say hi to yeah. Esther. Mikey, have a great week. And to our viewers and listeners, again, thanks for all the support. Please, uh, you know, share us. Uh, subscribe to yep. our YouTube channel. We want to become as famous as Alan Esta. With that being said, remember, <laughs> if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone. Hey, get, hey guys, day. be careful on the roads. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Yep. Take Thanks, care. Mike. Audio The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.